Greetings, acolytes. Rodney Anonymous, one half of Seventh Victim here. Uh, in this transmission, which might be the first one that you get to see, uh, we're going to be discussing this, the IK Multimedia Uno Synth. And we're going to be discussing it because I showed a picture of it and people asked about it. And that's the only reason why. A um, bit of a backstory. Uh, I, as you can tell by my grizzled prospector look, I've been on vacation for about a week. Uh, and during that week, I decided while Vienna and I were resting in beautiful Bucks County, PA, or rural Bucks County, it's lovely there, uh, I decided to spend some mental energy or lack thereof uh, just thinking about ways that Seventh Victim could go dollless. Uh, if you're not a musician, a doll is a digital audio workstation. Or if you're a musician from like the last century, if you're playing lute in a Renaissance band, you may not have one, although you probably do. Probably using Reaper. That's a big lute playing Renaissance guy. Thing. I use FL Studio. Uh, if you're watching this and you are a musician, you probably use something more expensive than I can get my hands on. We'll skip over that. Anyway, um, what happened was taking along the laptop to shows was just one extra thing for Seventh Victim. Works okay for the Dead Milkman because I have a lot of stuff in there. Uh, with Seventh Victim, uh, it was just, you know, I had to lug it along, set it up. It was one more thing. What I really wanted was just, just the board. Slap the board down, fire everything up, and go. I didn't want anything extra to wait on. So that's why that went goodbye. Just a pain in the butt to drag the laptop around, set it on the thing. <sighs> My life so sad okay so what happened was i'm in bucks county i'm lying in bed i'm listening to different types of synths and i realized the synth i get has to fit the seventh victim aesthetic which is basically it has to be pretty cheap i don't want to buy something that nobody else can afford i think the idea is that if you watch these things you should be able to say you know i could probably and you could do that you're better than i can uh but it shouldn't cost a lot to make music so i like to get something and they're like yes it was pretty cheap this was less than 200 bucks. Okay, you can get a synth, and it's a good sounding synth. It's a darn, I hope you can hear that. Let me crank that up. I'm hoping you can hear it. Uh, and uh, um, just give you a couple examples here. Move the LFO, take the rate up on the LFO. Oh, I'm enjoying the hell out of that. All right, I'm getting too too far ahead of myself. All right, so what happened was how to fit the uh, the aesthetic. And first of all, the color, perfect for all that. Um, also, fairly cheap, and it had to be able to fit on the board, as previously mentioned. In fact, it was replacing this, which used to run off the doll. This is an Akai uh, MPK Mini. Really good, really like it. Uh, unfortunately, what happened was at the last show, uh, this key here got bent up, and I thought, oh... I've learned a lot here. One, everything should go in the hard case, not the soft case, and keys are bendy. And if you see the Akai, I'm oh, sorry, if you see the Uno synth, it doesn't really have keys. It has these, these little recessed keys. And some people say, they complain. They say, my hands are too big to play those tiny keys. And I'm like, well, why the hell are you playing music? If you have huge hands, you should be playing sports. Be out there throwing that ball around or whatever it is you do leave music to the tiny people. And I have tiny little hands. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so what happens is this, I needed something that could replace the uh, soft synth that I tend to use for most seventh victim stuff. And that is a beautiful soft synth, uh, which is called scan synth. And if we could get, can we get that on the screen? There's scan synth, yay! Uh, and this is what I normally use. It's a very simple synth, uh, just a couple oscillators in there, a few envelopes, a couple of LFOs, and uh, it uh, it mimics, uh, oddly enough, the uh, the Uno synth. So I thought once I went through and was laying in bed in beautiful Bucks County, listening to uh, all the presets, yes, I did this. I listened to about an hour's worth of presets. I thought, yes, I can work with that. So that's when I decided to send away for a scan synth. So I've had this for about 24 hours and then totally in love with it um it's very simple you get a nice little matrix here you see this well first of all let me tell you it's battery powered you can put you know, we're running it right now from usb power but you can put four batteries in there which i've done and you can run it off battery which means you can take it places can't really do that with your laptop you take your laptop places you take out the laptop you got a keyboard up to it it's it's painful this thing is is so far again seventh victim aesthetic is it portable 
generally, yeah, nice and lightweight. Okay, so uh, we have a nice little matrix here. We have access to uh, two oscillators, very nice. Uh, these are the uh, different uh, tunes for each of those. We have here a nice filter, very, very handy. Uh, we have, uh, here's the envelope right here. So you can set the attack, the delay, uh, you know, you can set your, uh, um, I say attack, you can set your attack, your decay, your release and your sustain all there, your ADSR, so that's nice. Uh, and uh, and the last thing is this lovely LFO section. It allows you to set your LFOs, not only the, the waveforms, which have a bunch, uh, you can't really get the sine waves from these two. It's very, very hardware, uh, but you can get a sine wave in your LFO. That's super cool, uh, and also it allows you to choose. You can actually just go with a, um, a high-pass filter, of course a low-pass, and there's a band-pass in there. It's very nice. makes some very neat sounds. Uh, also, what I want to bring up with this is, not all the parameters are accessible from this little thing here. You have to use the uh, editor that comes with it. So can we get the editor up on there? There's the editor. Uh, the editor is very nice, very useful uh, because not only is it allowed to go in, edit stuff, and save it, so then you can put that wherever you want. So if you have a gig, you can line up all the different sounds. Uh, but, you know, since nobody wants to be sitting there going, oh, wait a minute now. I'm Just any minute now, I'll have up the the sound that I wanted. But, um, you know, so that allows you to put in the, also it kind of forces you to save sounds. There's nothing worse than making something and not saving it. So, and again, a lot of this stuff is super simple with the little matrix. I'm not a genius at this. I've done it for a long time, but my specialty is FM synthesis. Uh, so this is, you know, something I don't dabble in a whole lot, but because of the old scan synth, yeah, I kind of understood where I was going. So I just want to show you something. This is a, took this, I think it's right here, yeah. This plucky little thing. Let me turn that up in case you can't hear it, but you should be able to hear it. Very plucky. All right, and about, I'm gonna say it took me less than 10 minutes to change that into this. All right, so that's, that's first of all, that's gonna sound great on our cover of Jamie's Crying. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so that's one. And right now I'm going through all the seventh victim stuff, trying to recreate the sounds from the scan synth. So I'm going to be up late. Again, only have for 25 hours. Got pretty much everything, uh, except for it, it's a little tricky. Uh, that sound that is at the beginning of uh, um, Hillbilly with a Meat Cleaver. And unfortunately, that's like a big hit for us. But on the other hand, a big hit for us is something that 10 people have heard. So what happens is people show up at our shows. If it's not quite, nobody's going to get upset, but they haven't heard it. Great thing about being in a new band. Um, the other thing is that, like I say, I wanted everything on the board. Uh, the problem with having the laptop is there were people dancing at our last show. And Janet and I were looking at each other like, well, this is scary. We're not sure if we have insurance for this. So everything just on one, all nice and Velcroed down on one thing. A number of accidents that could happen greatly minimized. All right, so that is, oh, um, let's talk about, yeah, we should should play some stuff from the scan synth, right? Not scan synth. That was the other thing. Should play some stuff from the Uno. See, it's already replaced it in my mind. Um, so, just going to run through, just give you a couple ideas. Got these nice sweeps in there. They're kind of cool. Paddish things. I can definitely use those. Um, that's got a nice bite to it. They have them arranged. I'm going to use that for something. Oh, by the way, another great thing about scan synth that I should bring up, not scan synth, I keep saying scan synth, the Uno synth that I should bring up is that the uh, Uno synth actually has, and this is the reason why I went with it over something like a Micro Freak. First of all, this is freakier, I think, than the Micro Freak. This actually has effects. So you can fire a scoop off in there, a little vibrato, wah. Wah is probably not cranked up that high in that one. Here's some tremolo. And each one of these actually ships, I believe, with a, um, uh, a sequence kind of designed around that sound. So hopefully if I press the sequence play button, you'll hear something. Stuff practically writes itself. So let me see, what do we got here? Now the problem is every tenth sound is noise. I'm probably gonna end up overwriting those, although they are cool. Um, 
And you can, the first 20 presets, you can't overwrite. Gives you about 80 that you can overwrite. So that's not bad. You're not going to, in your lifetime, you're not going to create more than 80 sounds. Unless you've had some sort of disgusting dinner, dinner like some sort of like Irish Cantonese combination. Ugh, that's foul. All right, so, uh, loving, very much loving the, uh, the uh, Uno. And the great thing about the Uno, I keep wanting to say Scanson. The great thing about the Uno is it actually has, one of the things it has, has scales. So you can change the scales. A lot of times, actually, when you go to check this stuff, uh, it'll be in some weird Japanese scale. So none of the, uh, none of the sharps or flats will, uh, will be uh, registering. You can actually go in through the software, change that to a regular scale. And I've done that for a couple of things. God, would be cool. So I'm about 24 hours into it. That means no sleep. I'm going to have some coffee. But I did get some, um, I did get some real estate back because this thing is so tiny. Uh, if you look at the stats, the stats make it a lot bigger. But I think the the stats they gave were the size of the box. But the good thing is now I've got room. Put Funko Pops, Audrey Horn, from Twin Peaks, Funko Pop. Uh, oh, one quick thing too about the Uno synth with the uh, um, using the editor. It's a little tricky. Sometimes it does not recognize the Uno synth. You need to go in. You need to play around with the MIDI settings. Uh, to get it to recognize it. If you have a problem with it, just shoot me an email if you got one. I figured it out. I figured it out about 2 in the morning last night, and I was super happy. This is tea, by the way. Not not celebrating. Okay, so um, eventually you will hear this all fired together, and it will be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, not really playing anything today, although, well, I could kind of give you an idea here. Let me get something that sounds like something. Might be loud as shit, but we'll see. Um, this would be, um, uh, oh God, this would be, uh, one, two, there we go. This would be her name is Witch, I believe. Give you an idea how close we are. idea it sounds really good so i think i've taken up too much of your time uh if i can get some samples up i will but that's it uh hope you enjoyed this transmission